Hey Steve here and this video is going to be a handful of useful layer masking tips that was prompted by a question I received recently which was how do I reset a layer mask? So that question would only take a couple of seconds to answer so I'm going to add in a bunch of other useful masking tips afterwards in case they can help you too. And if you want to go beyond the basics of regular layer masks then click the link in the description below this video where you can download my free starters guide and introduction to luminosity masking. For now, here's the answer to the question of how to reset a layer mask. So for the sake of this demo, let's just add a random curves adjustment. Uh, just add a bit of contrast there for the sake of it. Uh, let's go really strong just so that it's completely obvious what, what I'm doing on screen. Okay, so let's, uh, let's say that we took a black brush and we wanted to mask this effect out from the water. So we'll just give it a bit through there with the brush and we can see in the mask we've got a big black blob in the middle now which is masking this adjustment out of the image. Now if you want to reset this to white again without trying to basically use a brush to brush everything out, uh, all you need to do is on the keyboard press on a Mac that'll be command and delete or on a PC control and delete. So I'll do that now and we'll see that it uh, resets the layer mask to white. Now the important thing about whether this gets reset to white or to black is that it's going to change to the color that you've got over here on the left hand side in your foreground and background um, properties of the of the brush tool. If you've got white in the background and you press command or control and delete it will reset to white. If we switch that around and put black in the in the background and then do the same thing it changes the mask to black. And there we go, that was uh, pretty quick and easy as I promised at the start. So let's just go through another couple of random uh, layer masking tips that you may or may not know. So um, yeah, the first is, uh, okay, let's draw a bit of, uh, put some white into the mask here. I'm just randomly brushing. Uh, so sometimes it can be a bit tricky to see exactly what's happening in the layer mask, especially if you're using luminosity masking and you need to see the really fine details. Uh, so rather than try to see what's happening here in the layers panel, if you press Alt or Option on the keyboard and then click on the mask, that loads the mask into view here. And then if you want, you can actually use the brush directly into the uh, main window here and that's going to add those brush strokes to the mask over here. So you'll see if I just add a bunch more white in here, then that gets reflected in the actual layer mask itself. So that's the first tip, which is, you know, Alt or Option, and, you, uh, and then click on the mask and you can see the mask in the main window. Um, next is if you wanted to copy a layer mask from one adjustment to another. So, you know, it can be, uh, well, quite often you can find that you've spent quite a lot of time making a really good layer mask, masking around certain edges of objects and that, and you know, it can be quite a bit of time invested. And then you perhaps want to make an adjustment that uses that same layer mask. What you can do, let's add another curves adjustment. Uh, let's just brighten the image with this adjustment. So to copy this mask from, uh, from curves four to curves five, you can hold Alt or Option on the keyboard, click the mask and then drag it and drop it onto Curves 5. So that's just as simple as, uh, you know, drag and drop basically, but you just need to make sure you're holding Alt or Option on the keyboard to do that. Now, another useful tip um, for layer masks, let me just get rid of this and I'll create a new uh, example. So let's add another curves adjustment and let's do a darkening curve here and let's grab a gradient with um, black to white and now let's draw a gradient going from up to down oops that's a radial gradient I need a linear okay so if we look at the layer mask there I haven't quite done it straight but we've got a mask where the top half of the image is um, is white and the bottom half is black. So if we disable this layer and enable it, would you agree that kind of looks a bit like the effect of having a grad filter 
where we're darkening the top of the image. Uh, well, this tip is that you can unlink the layer mask from the adjustment. So what we can do here, if we just click this little chain thing uh, to, um, to unlink it, and then we grab the move tool, click on the mask, and now we can actually move this mask up and down. So it looks a bit funny. <laughs> We've got some issues down the bottom here if we move it up, but moving it down, you can see that it's kind of the same thing as if we were sliding a grad filter up and down in the image. And then, uh, you know, if, if you don't unlink the mask from the adjustment, then you can't do this. So that's uh, another handy tip there. And if you, um, you know, if you do want to move it up and you get this dark line at the bottom, then you can just fill that in with the brush afterwards and just tidy that bottom edge up. So the final layer masking tip that I've got for you in this video is uh, relating to layer mask density. So let's just add another random curves adjustment and make a, uh, make a contrast adjustment again. I'm going to go overboard here just so we can see the effect in the image. I wouldn't normally make an adjustment quite as strong as this in one hit. Um, but okay, let's again take a brush and let's say that we wanted to brush this away from the foreground. So we're keeping this contrast effect in the water and the sky and the trees. But when we look at the layer mask over here, we've uh, masked it out of the foreground. Now, what you can do, so if you wanted to kind of blend this effect in a little bit more, you can um, reduce the opacity of the layer. So this is kind of pulling the, uh, pulling the effect back a bit in its intensity. So the high contrast is being applied in the sky there and we can kind of reduce that to blend it into our tastes after applying the layer mask. Now, if you want to actually go the other way around and you know, let's say what we've done in this example is brush this effect out from the foreground completely because the layer mask is completely black there. Now, the opposite of blending the sky in to make it less would be to blend the foreground in to gradually introduce the effect into the image. So the way that we do that is to double click. Well, what I'm going to do here is double click on the adjustment layer itself and then click here on the masks and then click on the layer mask. So the reason I'm doing that is because if we double click directly on the layer mask, it's going to open into the select and mask, which I never use personally, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't like it. So yeah, that's how you can get to this properties window without going into that whole massive uh, select and mask thing, which is just overly complicated and confusing. Um, so what we can do, this density uh, slider here, if we slide this back, what it's doing is turning that, that um, otherwise 100% black that we painted into the layer mask, it's turning it slightly gray, it's sort of getting less intense. So as we do that, the effect is coming through a bit stronger in the foreground. So that's kind of basically the inverse of reducing the opacity to gradually blend the effect out of the areas in the mask that are white. By doing this, we can gradually blend the effect in to those areas that are black in the layer mask. So I hope you found this tip useful and along with the others that I provided earlier in the video. And just another reminder, like I said at the start of the video, if you want to download my free introduction to luminosity masking, then uh, yeah, I've got a link in the video description below where you can just go and enter your email address and I'll send it to you. So with that, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.